You guys may remember back last year, I was in North Carolina to install a laser at the Rolling Hills Gin. And this is some footage from that. Actually, it was earlier this year. It was in January of this year, so almost a year ago. And they had a little snow on the ground when I was there then. And uh, so now we're back uh, this time to install a press break. And uh, this time it's actually during cotton season. Uh, when the gin's running, and uh, last year uh, it was after the gin season was over. Rips holding the other side for So this is a 10 foot wide, 200 ton CNC servo brake from Prima Press, uh, same brand as all the other ones that you see in my videos. And uh, this one is a four plus one axis machine with the Dellum DA53T controller. And you'll see all about that in this video. You notice the wheel loader there, uh, the front tires on that are getting a pretty solid workout. So you may remember from the last video uh, that they have the main gen facility and then just not even a quarter of a mile down the road they've got this small uh smaller shop and uh, it's got a little bit lower ceilings and the door openings are pretty narrow but they were able to get it all in there and uh, get it situated I always start with uh, dialing in a press brake with checking the right and left bends. And you can see this is kind of what we started out with. And then uh, we made this adjustment and got it closer. And then uh, right here, you can see we got it really dialed in pretty nicely. And there may be a minor amount of difference, but that can be tweaked on every bend. You can do a correction on right and left independently if needed. So once we get the right and left being equal, not really caring about the actual angle, uh, just making sure that they're equal, we come back and now focus on the overall angle and the calibration of the ram coming down and you know making our final adjustments there to um, be able to produce the right result that we're looking for here. So my approach to training on these machines is to stand back and provide information and instruction and let the new owners of the machine drive all of the processes so they firsthand have as much experience navigating through the menus and understanding exactly what's happening as much as possible. So this is Jonah and his dad, Wes, and uh, Wes, you know, obviously has overall responsibility for the gen operation and Jonah has responsibility for maintenance and repairs and it's a pretty critical job, especially during gen season. Um, you know, if they, if they go down, it's a, it's a problem. So that's why they have the separate fab shop where they've got, you know, a laser now a press break and the Haas mill and some other machines over there so that you know, they can take care of their own repairs and get the gen back up and running during the critical window of time during the harvest and processing time to, uh, 
you know, keep the gin running as much as possible. So these guys bought quite a bit of extra tooling uh, along with the purchase of the brake. So uh, part of what we did during the uh, setup and training is uh, entered in all their tooling to the tooling library. And that's a good, you know, more repetition, uh, more experience so that later when they buy even more tooling, they can, uh, you know, have the skills and, and um, knowledge to put that in there. You know, and, and owning a press brake is kind of like owning a lathe over its lifetime. You'll spend far more on the actual tooling than you did on the uh, original purchase of the machine. And then go to your manual screen, and you can select that as a die. Two. You see that actual angle of 97.6 on a target of 90. That's kind of what we want. You know, we want it to be around five to seven degrees open from the target. And then you can use the correction to fine tune the bend. And so that's kind of what Jonah did there was just uh, re enter the correction and we're gonna re-bend it again and check it again. Looks like it's over a little bit. But I keep seeing that and it's really not. <laughs> still under a little bit in it. <laughs> well, how'd, I, how'd I get it off well? Just apply the right amount of pressure. That's why I said inside a degree, I do not trust those at all. Hey, we had it. Oh, oh, oh. First, first time I stuck it up there, it was 90 points. So as I mentioned, they bought quite a bit of tooling extra to go with the brake. And I believe this is a two inch die opening here. And uh, we were using quarter inch material in that. And, uh, you know, just uh, verifying that we have the right setup by doing a 180 test bend to make sure that, you know, when you enter 180, it should come down and barely kiss the top of the material. And then here you see the actual bend. So that was actually a piece of, I think it was hard ox or AR 500 or 400, can't remember what it was, but it was not regular mild steel. We were using mild steel uh, setup for it, and that's why it way under Bennett based on what we were uh, shooting for there. Yep. Yeah. That's a 
So now we're progressing our way up. We just did the, the test hit at 180 there. This is a 3 8 or 10 millimeter uh, carbon steel in a three inch die opening. Negative seven. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go for negative seven. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Oh, that looks that's pa that's passing the eye test. Still a little bit open. I can't see on the angle there. Oh, it is a little closed, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you were right with that negative six. Sitting back here, not hitting that there. Yeah. I don't believe in this thing necessarily all the time. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. One degree over. Mm-hmm. Which is what we pretty much saw there. So this guy right here is a, a fireball now. Lots and lots of energy. We were having a hard time getting stuff done. He was uh, so excited jumping all over us. So we had to kind of put him up for a minute here while we were uh, trying to work and get stuff done. But showing you just a little overall uh, tour of the machine and back in behind it, the back gauge, you know. The structure on this thing is just incredible. Three inch plate is uh, what uh, the thing is constructed out of. Again, it's. 10 foot wide, 200 ton capacity, and that's 200 metric tons. So it's it's actually 220 US tons. So here's the Ori 3000 watt laser that I installed uh, about this time last year, uh, not quite a year ago. And uh, man, they've been doing a lot of cutting with it. And um, I think they were cutting a bunch of uh, uh, high carbon steel knife blanks. And those uh, get cut with oxygen and produce a lot of smoke. And it really smokes up the machine. And uh, you can tell by looking at it uh, there that they, they've done that. But um, so in the tooling that they bought, they got uh, up to, I think, four inch. And we bent half inch on that. I think we just showed that in the last clip there. And then uh, we want to be able to show you know answer the question of quote how thick can it bend i can't tell you how many times a day i answer that question how thick can it bend basically you can bend any thickness you want on any press break you know it really comes down to um i mean within reason of course it really comes down to the dies and the, and the punch and um here we were cutting out some laminated laser cut six inch die opening uh, to be able to bend three quarters. So, uh, but before that, we uh, threw in the uh, gooseneck punch. So let's take a look at the capabilities of the gooseneck here. Wow. 
just needs about a six, six degree correction. How thick will it bend? Gary, 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 how thick will it bend? Well, there you go. Three quarter inch steel in a six inch wide die. And the uh, controller told us that it needed 40 uh, tons to bend that piece. So that's seven inches wide of three quarter inch carbon steel in a six inch die, 40 tons. So guess what? If you have a 40 or 50 ton press brake and you put the right punch and die in there, you can bend the same material. Is it great to do that all the time in a small brick? No, it's not. But can it be done? Yes, and guys do it all the time. So here's Jonah opening up the uh, last set of tooling that we uh, got set up in the machine. And this is actually a, a hemming die set. And uh, it's really kind of a three piece design where the lower part's made out of two pieces and then the punch is uh, going to be a knife edge punch. And so uh, this is actually the first hemming die I have done on a uh, four plus one servo brake. And uh, it was a little bit awkward to set up. Uh, we got it working right in the manual mode, but in the uh, automatic mode where it does uh, collision detection and, you know, figures out all your angles and steps for you. Um, there's a lot to, to do with that, and we didn't get that quite set up right, and I'm waiting on uh, Prima to give me a video showing a little better detail on how to configure that part of it. And uh, so we'll get that going here uh, hopefully pretty soon. But, you know, you'll see uh, how, the, how, the, how it works, you know. It's where you want to hem, hem an edge if you're not familiar with uh, hemming dies. Uh, come down and produce a very acute bend, and then... Uh, pull the part out, slipping in the uh, flattening part of the die, and then uh, flatten out the hem. So you'll, uh, you'll get to check it out right now. I got editing software. still this so then we'll modify yeah. this well, that's kind of wrapping up this video and i just wanted to say that i'm very thankful to have uh, a set of customers out there um, choosing to buy machines from me that are, they really like friends or family. You know, we, anybody that's a customer of mine, we talk on a regular basis, text, weekends, holidays, after hours. It doesn't matter if they, uh, if they just want to chat or they got a problem, you know, I'm always here and available. And, you know, they, and for that, they give me uh, really good treatment by giving me unlimited amounts of peanut butter pie.